One thing that I like to do to have fun is to sit somewhere different. So Mr. Bergen has to go, uh-oh, where's Rian today? So it's kind of like a where's, Mr. Bergen, where's Wooly? Is that correct? Where's Waldo is what we say, we've said in the United States. Where's Wooly? Wooly, yeah. So in the United States, we know it as where's Waldo, but in the UK and Australia, people say where's Wooly. Now, I wish I had a really nice way of tying that into today's message, but I don't. So anyway, let's do some review. <laughs> I love having fun in the morning. I honestly, I love hearing you sing in the morning. It's such an encouragement to me. Let's review and let's remember who the one of encouragement is today. So first of all, fruit of the spirit is what we're talking about. On Monday, what were the two fruit that we were talking about? Love and joy was on Monday. Tuesday, what do we have? What do we have? We focused on hope. We were focusing on hope. Zachary. Peace and patience on Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Yesterday seems a long time away. Are you sure, Arwen? Kindness and goodness. Kindness and goodness, yes. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. We're going to keep going. Who were our main character? Who was our villain from day one? Who was it, Noah? Saul of Tarsus. Saul of Tarsus. Who was our encourager on Tuesday? Who was our encourager on Tuesday, Annika? Saul. Ooh, he was an encouragement. You're right. Who was Paul's mentor who was an encouragement? Ah, I know, I'm pretty tricky. Barnabas, Paul's mentor and encourager. Gamaliel was also a mentor to Saul, but he wasn't the one of encouragement, which I, someone corrected me and said Gamaliel yesterday, and that was awesome that you're making me think. Yesterday, can you think of any main characters that we talked about? Friends of Paul, what do we think, Jonathan? Timothy is one of them, you're right. He had a mother who was Jewish, a father who was Greek. Who else was tagging along? Silas. Did you say Silas? Just nod your head and say, yeah. <laughs> no, you're good. It was Silas. Good thinking, though. I love that you're thinking and you're trying and these hands are up. Put your hands down. You got it. We had. On day one, we talked about Saul and Paul. Yesterday, or Tuesday, we talked about Barnabas. Yesterday, we talked about Silas and Timothy. And there were a lot of other characters that we talked about, but those are the ones that I want to bring up. We could go through the supporting characters, but we have talked about so many people. And today, we're going to talk about even more. So we had Ananias. We had John Mark. We had Lydia. Aquila and Priscilla. Lydia was the wealthy businesswoman from Asia. Aquila and Priscilla were tent makers who gave Paul a time of rest in Corinth. So that's our review, and that is a mouthful. Let's say our theme verse. Ready? Repeat after me. Let's see if I do this right. Paresia. Ready, set, therefore, let's approach the throne of grace. Oh, draw near to, wait, when you draw near to something, you usually don't go, oh man, I don't like this, but I'm going to like get closer to it. No, we draw near to things that we value, things that we say, this is something worth investing in. This is where I want to put my time. So today we're going to look at two fruit of the spirit and we're going to focus on value. Value, the importance, worth, or usefulness of something. So I brought back an old friend because you love him, I love him. It's the $75 saxophone that I got from a thrift shop. And we look at this and we go, that is a piece of garbage. It doesn't, it like, like this is supposed to go somewhere. Oh look, and this is probably supposed to go somewhere and you go, huh, well that's, that's nice, Rian, thanks. Put that away, please. But then you see, ready, can you go, wah, 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 wah. Wah, 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 wah. That's the sound the treasure chest makes when you open it in the Legend of Zelda, so just so you know. And then I go, wham, and you go, ooh, ah. Ooh, ah. And this you go, oh man, Rian, that is one saxophone you got there. It's shiny. I can check my teeth and it, it sounds fantastic. It has all these buttons that make some people sound good and other people not sound as good if you don't know how to use it. But it's beautiful. And you know what the best thing is? It's a tenor just like me. And I go, man, this is a worthwhile instrument. I can see its usefulness. I can see how it can bless people. But 
what if this instrument, and I'll just say this, what if it costs like a thousand dollars? And you're like, wow, that's a lot of money. But then, this instrument belonged to someone's great grandfather. And it's the last thing they have to remember them. Is this instrument useful for playing music? No. Is this instrument something that's like beautiful to look at with its little ribbon thing that I don't, didn't even notice before? Is it beautiful to look at? No, not really. Would it make a pretty good paperweight? Yeah, I would do that. But things don't just have value because we can see it. Does every person have value? Do some people seem like this? Yes. Do some people seem like this? This instrument could be worth more to some people than that instrument because it's not what it can do. It's not just the ways that we see it to be useful. It's the way God sees them to be useful. Saul was a very learned man. He knew a lot. But God didn't choose him just for that. He chose him because he was a chosen instrument. Oh, man. We're getting deep early. I'm sorry. Can you go, woo? woo. Sometimes things get hard and heavy. And as I say these things, some of us are being convicted of things. And I'm not saying, you there, you did something wrong. No, 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 no. I'm saying, if you are a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. And God is working not because I'm a good speaker. God is working in you because he loves you and he's chosen you and I believe that today could be the most important day in the lives of some friends here for me today is one of the most important things that I am permitted to do in my life and you think Rian what are you talking about and I'm gonna say I'm just glad to be a part of it today we're gonna talk about why I exist and why we exist. It may sound crazy, but Chehi is a very special place. And everything that we do here at Chehi points to what we are going to talk about today. And that's a very loaded statement, but I'll say this. We are going to talk about the gospel. We are going to talk about that it's only by the grace of God and his son's death on the cross for our sins that we are able to spend eternity in heaven. And that sounds like big and crazy, but we're going to talk about our friend Paul, and I'm praying that the Lord is stirring in you, that the Holy Spirit is making you want to ask questions because we're not just me yelling. We have counselors who are supporting this, and this is why we're here at Chehi. This is why we're on this earth. As the book of Matthew ends, go and make disciples unto the nations. And right now, we're the nation of Chehi, and I want to encourage you to ask questions about having a relationship with Christ. So... Let's remember our fruit of the Spirit, but oh, that's what it's all about. It may be the words at the end of the hokey pokey, but today is what it's all about. So I loved, getting a little distracted, but I loved what Mr. Harry did with our cannon yesterday, and I would love to do that. Ready? I'm going to walk around. I'll be right back, Austin. So ready? I'm going to go shink, 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 and I'm going to say right down here, shink, we have one. One. Two. Two. Shink, 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 shink. Shink. Three. Three. Four. Four. Ready? It'll be like this. Love, joy, peace, patience. But when we get to self-control, we all say it together. One, two, ready, go. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. Wow! You better watch out, Dr. Miller. Here I come. I'm going <laughs> to... And that's when Dr. Miller says, Rian, sit down, please. <laughs> Let's say it all together. Say it with conviction. Say it as if you're saying it to someone. Ready? Go. God way. He thinks much the same way that fruit appears in an orchard. Things like affection for others, exuberance about life, serenity. We develop a willingness to stick to things, a sense of compassion in the heart, and a conviction that basic holiness permeates things and people. We find ourselves involved in loyal commitments, not needing to force our way in life, 
able to marshal and direct our energies wisely. So today, we are going to be talking about gentleness and faithfulness if you're keeping track. First question is, what is it? Faithfulness is trustworthy witness and dependability involved in loyal commitments and a commitment to what is valuable. And the thing about this, that comes naturally. You don't usually have to tell yourself, oh, I better be committed to this. I love Frisbee and it's good for me looking really good and exercising. You're not going to be like, okay, I'm going to work hard and commit to Frisbee. It's like sometimes we might exercise and get ready for it, but a lot of times we are naturally inclined to commit to what we value. Now, let's look at gentleness. We have, oh, oh, not, did we just skip gentleness? No, 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 there it is, there we go. <clears throat> anyway, it was the screen, it wasn't me. Softness of action or effect. Not needing to force our way in life. Special care towards what is valuable. Special care towards what is valuable. Yet again, we are naturally inclined to focus and commit to what we see as valuable and we give special care to what is valuable. So, bum ba bum oh, you're turning the page. Ooh, yes, we get to look at a map. Map, there it is. Oh, see, this is a big map. And this map is kind of interesting because usually when we look at a map, we start in Antioch because that's the church that usually sends out Paul, but we usually end in Antioch. Hmm, we'll figure that out. So, Paul was going to Galatia and Phrygia. So he started in Antioch and he's like, oh, do, 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 do. And he went all the way to Galatia. Oh, Galatia is this old big green thing. And then he went to Asia and that area. And he's right about here where our next story takes place. Can you say Apollos? Apollos. Apollos was a, let's read it, mighty in scripture. He spoke boldly about Christ and he showed gentleness in receiving critique, which sometimes that can be really hard. So this is the story. Apollos was talking about Christ. He was giving people instructions. He was saying, ooh, you should do this. You should do that. Ooh, don't do this. That's not a good thing. And he's, he was like a pastor. But Aquila and Priscilla, two friends that we met yesterday, a husband and wife who fled from Rome. They were Jews and they went to Corinth and now they're hanging out in Ephesus. They met Apollos, they heard him preach and they were like, oh boy, that's not the full story. Because Apollos learned from the disciples of John the Baptist. And you think, wait, was John the Baptist wrong? No, 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 no. But John the Baptist spoke about baptism and repentance of the sins, and repentance of the sins, whereas when Jesus came, he preached about salvation and how you're saved. So now, Apollos could have been like, well, like, I've been doing this for a while, and I'm pretty smart, and I know what's going on, but he didn't. He humbly accepted the critique and guidance from Aquila and Priscilla. And Aquila and Priscilla could have been like, wow, this guy, this, this guy is dumb. What is he doing? Oh my goodness, he should know better. He should ask more questions. But they didn't. They thought, what a great opportunity to show faithfulness to God and gentleness in the way that I approach a younger Christian. If you haven't yet, we're going to be spending time in Acts, so open your Bibles to Acts, and we'll be focusing around chapters 18. So it'll be, we're going to flip, actually, flip to chapter 19, Acts chapter 19, and I'll talk about what's coming next. So, Paul came down from Ephesus, and Apollos went somewhere else. Now, it's funny because right after that happened, the book of Acts tells us, chapter 19, verses 1 through 10, that Paul met people who believed the same thing as Apollos. And do you think Paul came down and said, losers, you're wrong. You should probably read the Bible. <laughs> oh, wait. Canonization didn't start until the Council of Nicaea. Anyway, so no, we'll talk about that a different time. So Paul came up to these Christians who didn't know better. They were thinking that all you can do is repent and that's all you do. But it's not just repenting, it's admitting Christ's death. 
and saying that only by grace are we saved. So Paul spoke into their lives. He used faithfulness to God to know what he was doing. He used gentleness in his speaking. He knew that the value was these people, so he didn't just yell at them and tell them they were wrong. He came alongside them. He ate lunch with them. He had conversations with them. So that's what Paul did. Now, our next question, or the next observ observation, is gentleness and faithfulness. Where do we see it? So just in case you didn't know, Paul is on his third missionary journey right now. And he, chapter 19, verses 11 through 20, I'll summarize it for you. People were noticing that Paul was like an all-star, and he was doing miracles. He was preaching the gospel. People were getting angry at him for the right reasons, because we can get people angry at us for the wrong reasons, but he was doing great things. Now, some people actually took the handkerchiefs that Paul had. And they took like an apron. I'm not sure why he was wearing an apron, but maybe he was serving in a kitchen. Maybe he was doing something. They took the handkerchiefs. They took his apron and they actually gave them to people who were sick and they were healed. I'm not saying that if you take my glasses and put them on a sick guy, then they're going to be better because no, 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 no. That's a way that the Lord worked in that situation. That's a way that the Lord helped people in a very special way. I'm not saying that happens now. I'm not saying it doesn't, but God works in very mysterious ways. So anyway, that was happening, and these guys were like, dude, we could make a lot of money like, like casting demons out of people like Paul and Silas did. Well, yeah, let's try it. So these guys are like, okay, <clears throat> they find a guy with an evil spirit in him, and they go, um, <clears throat> in the name of Jesus, as Paul has said, get out of him. And because they had terrible intentions and they were probably trying to make money off of this, the demon guy was like, dude, I know Jesus and I know Paul, but who are you? And you think, uh, okay, that's scary. And then the demon guy beats up these guys. And it's like, oh my goodness, this isn't the Bible? Yeah, it is. So the demon guy beats up these guys. And then you think, well, as long as no one knew about it, everybody found out that this happened. And they're like, oh, wow, um, don't mess with Paul. Make sure you know God and you, like, preach truth because, like, God knows our hearts and he knows why we do what we do, how we do what we do, and he is going to value our faithfulness and gentleness and how we handle other people. So those guys got beat up. Everyone found out. And then, Acts 19, 19, and 20, and many of those who practiced magic brought their books together and began burning them in the sight of everyone. And they added up the price of the books and found it to be about 50,000 pieces of silver. So the word of the Lord was growing and prevailing mightily. I need my math people here. Ready? Can you put your math hats on and go, math, math. If you're not a math person, it's okay. Ready? 50,000 pieces of silver. Each piece of silver cost about $8.50. $8.50 times 50,000. Think about it. If you brought a pencil, you can write it down. I want to see if anyone can get it. Let's see, what do you think? What do you think? Okay, ready? Oh, 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 hey, I like hands. I like hands. We have Andrew. 400,000 is actually not as much because you didn't multiply the 0 0.5 because it's 8.5 times 50,000. You did 8 times 50,000. What do we think? $425,000 worth of books. Now, what type of books were they? They were books about practicing magic. When you place your value in something else, things that mean nothing kind of fall by the wayside. These people repented, and a sign of their repentance was saying, I don't need these. I would rather dedicate my life to Christ than have these things that are of incredible value. Many people who practice magic turn to God in that time. Now, here's another guy. Can you say Demetrius? Demetrius. Thinking about silver, Demetrius was a silversmith, and he made silver shrines of the god Artemis. Now Artemis, this is what happened, a meteorite falls in Ephesus and people are like, oh my goodness, it's a god, it's a god, it's a god right there. So they pick up this like meteorite thing and they're like, oh my gosh. And then they're freaking out because they're like, well, it fell from the sky, water falls from the sky and that's a good thing. This falls from the sky and that's a good thing. So then this guy's like, oh, 
I wonder like if I could like uh, make things like that look like Artemis out of silver and sell them. And he's like, dude, so he's like, he's rich. But when the Christians come and people aren't worshiping rocks anymore, then, <laughs> sorry, that was kind of mean. Then he got scared because he's like, dude, no one's buying my shrines. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? And he's like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to tell my friends. So <laughs> Demetrius is like, guys, 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 guys. If we like kill the Christians and make them leave, then we can make more money. And they're like, yay, money, awesome. See, I put the symbols up there to mean something. So Demetrius gets these guys and he's like, guys, ready? Let's start a riot. Let's start a riot. And they're like, oh, well, how do you start a riot? And it's like, okay, everybody starts screaming. And they're like, ah! So they scream. And they're like, wait, oh, what should we do next? Oh, grab those guys. And then they grab two of Paul's friends and they take him into the theater and they, and they shut the door of the theater. And then Paul is like, oh my gosh, my friends. And he's like running there and he's going to go pound on the door and get in there. And people are like, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't do that. Settle down. Let's trust God with this one. So then all these people are in this theater and they're freaking out and they put these Christians on the stage and they're like, why are we here? Because it's just a bunch of random people in a mob screaming. So then one guy gets up and he's like, hey guys, settle down. And like, hey, he's Jewish. And they go, great is Artemis of the Ephesians. And they yell that for two hours. Oh my word. So they're screaming and yelling. And eventually this clerk comes up and he's just like, he, a lot of people know him. He helps keep the rules in order. So he comes up and he's like, Demetrius, what the heck are you doing? And Demetrius is like, like, uh, I wanted money and uh, they didn't let me get money. So I started a riot. And, uh, uh, uh. and then he's like, Acts 19 verses 39 through 20 or 41. But this is the clerk talking to Demetrius. But if you want anything beyond this, it shall be settled in a lawful assembly. For indeed, we are in danger of being accused of a riot in connection with today's events. Since there is no real reason for it, and in this connection, we will be unable to account for this disorderly gathering. After saying this, he dismissed the assembly. In other words, the clerk was like, stop it, go home. And they're like, oh man, and then they went home. <laughs> So it's crazy. Demetrius is an example of how to not work with gentleness and faithfulness. He disagreed with someone, much like Aquila and Priscilla did, but they went alongside Apollo, so they talked to him. Demetrius started a mob and tried to kill people to solve his problems. So just so you know, don't kill people, friends. <laughs> how often do we approach disagreements with gentleness instead of accusations? What are our values when we have these conversations? This is actually, the next story is one of my favorites because let's think back. Tall, uh, tall, tall went to Parsis. Paul was sent back to Tarsus after the people in Jerusalem were angry at him and he went there alone. Now, chapter 20, verses 1 through 12. He was in Macedonia for three months and then more people wanted to kill him, so he left. But... See, Macedonia is over here, and so he was there and he had to flee, but he didn't flee by himself. Acts 24, and he, Paul, was accompanied by Sopater of Berea, the son of Pyrrhus, and Aristarchus, and Secundus of the Thessalonians, and Gaius of Derby, and Timothy, and Tychicus, and Trophimus. God doesn't always give us exactly what we want when we're faithful, but God knows what we need. God gave Paul a community. And I'm not saying that when you get home, everything is going to be perfect. I'm going to say, God cares for you more than anyone ever could. And I wish that I could say that in a way that you truly understand, but I pray that God gives you things so you know what he is doing in your life. Oh, moving on. So, Paul's moving around. Paul's moving this way. Paul gets to Miletus. And the Lord puts on his heart that Paul needs to go to Jerusalem. So Paul is in Miletus and he spoke emotionally with the elders of Ephesus. Paul thanked them for serving alongside him. Acts 20, 36-38. When he said these things, he knelt down and prayed with them all. And they all began to weep aloud and embraced Paul, grieving especially over the word which he had spoken, that they would not see his face again. 
and they were accompanying him to the ship. This is where Paul's journey to Jerusalem begins. So Paul was in Miletus, and then he comes all the way down here to Tyre, and he has to say some more goodbyes. This is Acts 21, 1 through 4. I will read it. Follow along in your Bibles if you can. Acts 21, verses 4. After looking up the disciples, we stayed there for seven days, and they kept telling Paul through the Spirit not to set foot in Jerusalem. When our days there were ended, we left and started on our journey, while they all, with their wives and children, escorted us until we were out of the city. After kneeling down on the beach and praying, we said our farewells. Paul is knowing, the God, Lord put on his heart, that Paul is leaving these people for the last time. He's saying his goodbyes, and he may never see them on this earth again. There's a man named Agabus that we talked about on Tuesday who said a famine was coming. He actually came up to Paul in chapter 21, verses 10 through 14, and said, Paul, you are going to be in front of a crowd of people, and there will be shackles on your feet, and the Lord will deliver you to the Gentiles. And that is horrifying because Paul replied, what are you doing weeping and breaking my heart? For I am ready not only to be bound, but even to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And since he would not be persuaded, we became quiet, remarking, the will of the Lord be done. Now Paul didn't only say, well, this is the gospel, you should follow it. He lived it. He was beaten constantly, it feels like, because he believed the gospel. Many people go around the country and share this word with people, and sometimes people are killed for sharing this. I praise the Lord that we can talk about the gospel right now, and I'm not afraid for my life. So let's walk through what the gospel looks like. And I challenge you that if you have questions about this, if you're not sure, you ask me or your counselors or your teachers because this is the most important thing about Chehi. And if I am wrong, I want to be corrected. But your salvation and us preaching this message is the most important reason why we are here. The first thing about the gospel is that God loves you and wants to experience wants you to experience peace and eternal life. As Romans 5.1 says on the screen, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. But there is separation. The problem, our separation from God, Romans 3.23 says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23 says, for the wages of sin is death and the gift of God is eternal life. We, because of our sinfulness, because we're human, we do not deserve to go to heaven. And there's nothing on this earth that can get us there. There's nothing we can do. But there is a bridge, the cross. 1 Peter 3.18 says, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteousness for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. Because of Christ's death on the cross, we can be saved and we can experience salvation and all the fruit of the Spirit are being manifested and planted in us when we are saved, when we accept Christ. Our response, Romans 10, 19, if you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It seems simple but that's the beginning. A Christian lifestyle is not easy, but it's worth it, and it's worth investing about and talking about. Here's what you need to do to be saved. Admit your needs. Say that I am a sinner. Be willing to turn from your sins. Re repent and change your life as a manifestation of the decision you make. Change your life as a manifestation of the decision that you made. Believe that Jesus Christ died for you on the cross and rose from the grave. Be saved by faith. 
prayer, invite Jesus to control your life through the Holy Spirit. Receive Him as the Lord and as your Savior. If you have any questions,